Hi, so it's our second week of magazine writing class and I wanted to touch base with you and just provide a little bit of information. You, as you're writing, I've been looking at your articles and reading them. I can tell you that so many of you wrote about delicious recipes and food that it made me hungry last time around. But um, good work, good work. It's amazing that you may think that these are just little articles that you kind of pulled from your information that you know in your life, but actually people look for this type of thing. When you're doing a publication, when you're creating a publication, you're a member of the magazine staff, many times you have an area that you need to fill space and that this type of, of article that you wrote is just the perfect thing to place there. So it's just a matter of being in the right place in the right time as far as getting published. And also, if, if you want to get your first byline out there in the magazine world, if you check magazines for, your, for reader area of con contribution, you may be able to write something that fits their needs because they have a space that readers can, can submit to. That's one way I got started with my magazine writing years ago when my children were, were younger. I would look for articles at places that they say, we will pay our, our um, readers $150 if you write this article about, or, or if you submit something and we choose it for our parents' tips column or, or something like that. But it's a good way to get in the door and get those published clips because in the world of magazine writing, published clips are very valuable. When they see that you have written before, you have been published, and here's a clip that was your article, then they, they are more apt to give you an assignment for, for another article that they have in mind. So that brings me to another point. One, of, one thing that was brought up this week is the difference between a freelance writer and a staff writer. And basically, I can give you, there, it's in our book, and it, so it's in the, the literature this week, but I can give you a few pointers on that. When you are on staff, Basically, you write what they ask you to write. There may be a budget meeting, which is a meeting where the editorial staff sits around the table and budgets how much space they have, what will go where, what, what are the deadlines, what images are needed to support these articles, um, advertising needs uh, that may go with the article, they may place an ad that kind of goes with that article in, within um, the page before or page after in the magazine. So at that budget magazine meeting, and if you are on staff, you are pretty much told what to write. You may say, I'd like to have this one, but in the end, they need to fill pages, they need certain things covered, and they're going to assign you an article. But when you are full-time, that is your full-time job and you're on salary. So that makes it very nice as well. But it's hard to get those full-time positions until you've had experience as a freelancer. In the world of magazine writing, a freelancer is someone who is assigned an article by an editor, and in that case, if you are assigned one, you're usually paid something up front to help you with your expenses and help you to write that article. And then you proceed to research, interview, and write the article, get it in on deadline, and it appears that it may have some edits, but it will appear in the magazine. Now, that's an ideal way to work once you have been established as a freelancer. But the reality is the brand new freelancer is a little bit different. As a brand new freelancer, you have to make a contact with the magazine by finding out what they are looking for and sending in a query which is like a pitch for your article so that they can consider it you don't some magazines will say send us your whole article and they'll consider it others will say send us a query letter and an example or an excerpt from it and we'll consider it there is a book called the writer's brief hand, or, excuse me called the writer's market wrong book <laughs> but the writer's market i actually bought it every year that I was a freelancer. It's a big, thick book that has all the magazines listed and what they're looking for and how much they pay, how they like you to submit it, what is the name of the editor that you will be submitting to. Now, though, there is a Writer's Market website, and I'm a member of that. So for week three folder, I'll be placing my login information into the folder so you can go in and use it, my login to look and see what magazines are out there and what do they pay for you to write articles for them? Many magazines have moved to online publications, so you're still getting a byline, you're still getting published, but you're not in print, you are in line. But what I suggest is, if some of you I know are just learning this just as a skill to learn, and, it, and that's good too, but if you're interested in freelancing, I suggest you start to create a portfolio of your articles, whether they've been published for your class or actually in a magazine, you should start keeping a, a, a portfolio. But one big thing in magazine writing you need to know is journalistic style is different than the way you write an academic paper. 
the style guide we use in journalistic writing is the Associated Press style guide. We try to avoid passive voice in journalistic writing. Passive voice is when you say, I will be going, it's just I am going. It, it, actually, I am going even has the ing on the end. It, it's, it's better in, in journalistic writing if it's just very clear and concise and straightforward. Um, the team beat their opponent. That, that would be very clear, active voice. Um, so I'm going to post some resources on active voice in the week three folder so that you have those. I'll send out an email when I post it just to kind of get you used to that sort of writing. That's important if you are writing for a newspaper. Now in a magazine, you have to know the magazine. One reason why you're required to read so many magazine articles and review magazines in this class is every magazine has its own style and you will have to adopt to that style. We have a student on main campus that has an internship with Ryan Seacrest Publications. She's writing in a very casual, first-person voice, young-sounding uh, vocabulary, because that's what they want for their website. And she's being published and really has a bright future. We're hoping she gets on um, in a full-time basis out there. Also, if you're writing for sports, there's a lot of opinion in sports. In news, we, you don't really put opinion in. You don't want it. But in sports, people get away with a very casual way of writing terms that are specific to the sport and opinion comes out in sports. How do you know what magazines want? Well, when you when you read them, you know. And what one thing that editors will say is, I really don't like it when freelancers submit an article to me and they've never read our publication. You have to know. If you want to get published in Sports Illustrated, you have to know what Sports Illustrated wants. If you want to get published in a crafting magazine or a photography magazine, you have to read their way of doing things and the, way, the things that they do publish so that your writing style can match that. So we're giving you the basics of that in this class. You're learning what it takes to, and what it, what it means to be a magazine writer. Um, should you have any questions as we move along, my office is here at the Tyler Plaza, which is across from the mall on Tyler. Um, but I'm happy to meet you if you uh, would like to come in and get some coaching on your writing. Happy to schedule an appointment, happy to come in. I'm also available through WebEx. I can send you a link and it's kind of like a Skype call and we have a, a meeting that way or a phone um, coaching session. So if you need any help, definitely know I'm here to help you. So have a good weekend and God bless.